So in this short video, we're going to look closer at how you solve for the optimal set of prices under third-degree price discrimination, where third-degree price discrimination is a type of pricing where you set one price to one group and another price to another group, like one price to students and another price to non-students. Now, solving this problem is going to be relatively simple when marginal cost is constant. I'm going to start with that case. When marginal cost is constant, solving for the optimal prices for each group is like solving for two different monopoly problems. You can kind of view it as one market for students, one for non-students. And if marginal cost is constant, then it really is like two separate markets. But let's start with one example. So suppose that we have that uh, for group one, call it G1, we have that uh, the inverse demand function is given by P1 is equal to 10 minus Q1, where all these subscripts denote that this is the price and quantity for this first group. Could be students or something like that. And then for group two, we're going to have that the inverse demand is P2, or the price that's charged to that group, uh, or that group will be willing to pay, is 20 minus 2 times the quantity that's sold to that group. Okay? And then let's also assume uh, that the cost function is given by 2 times Q. So you take the derivative of that, you just get that the marginal cost is 2. Each additional unit produced uh, costs $2. Let's start by finding the optimal price that you charge for group 1. We could write that the profit uh, from group 1 is equal to price that you charge that group times the quantity you sell that group minus the cost of the quantity that you sell that group. Um, and we can plug in what price is equal to. We know that price is equal to 10 minus the quantity sold to that group. Okay, so this part here is just price. Um, and then multiply that by the quantity sold to that group. Uh, minus costs, which is equal to 2 times the quantity sold to that group. And then we take derivative. So then we take big D for derivative. Derivative of profits from group 1 with respect to the quantity sold to group 1 is going to be equal to 10 minus 2Q1 minus 2. And as usual, when we're solving for these uh, profit maximization problems, we're going to set the derivative equal to 0. And we can then just solve for Q1, and you would get that Q1 is equal to 4. Plug that back into this uh, inverse demand function here, and we'd get that the price that you would want to charge this group uh, is equal to $6. Okay. And then we can just go through the same steps to solve for the uh, profits from group 2. Okay, so you can see that you'd want to charge group 1 a price of $6 and group 2 a price of $11. And that would be the optimal third degree price discrimination strategy in this example. Okay, now let's think about what happens if marginal cost is not constant. Then the marginal cost of the last unit depends on the total number of units produced, including units sold to group 1 and units sold to group 2. Therefore, we can't just treat it as two separate problems because the costs, uh, or the two problems are interdependent because of the connection um, from the cost side. So the way we're going to solve this problem is we're going to write down the firm's total profits from two groups. And that's going to give us the function that we're trying to maximize over two variables, the quantity that's intended to be sold to group one and the quantity that's intended to be sold to group two, which the quantity that's sold to a group determines the price that that group ends up paying. Um, okay, so let's, um, let's consider an example and I'll go over exactly how we solve this problem. Okay, so let's start by writing down the demand function. The demand for group 1 is equal to 16 minus the price that group 1 is charged. And the demand for group 2 is equal to 
24 minus the price that it's charged. We could rearrange each of these to solve for the inverse demand function. For group 1, it's P1 is equal to 16 minus Q1. And for group 2, it's P2 is equal to 24 minus uh, Q2. Okay. And uh, let's also assume that the cost is a um, function of the total amount produced. And let's suppose in this problem it's equal to the total amount produced squared. Okay. So the marginal cost does change as more units are um, produced. Okay, so with this basic setup, Let's now write down the profit function for this firm. Okay, so this is the total profit earned from both groups. It's going to be equal to the price charged to group 1 times the quantity sold to group 1 plus the price charged to group 2 times the quantity sold to group 2 minus the cost function. Okay, so now we can plug in the specific values. Okay, the price for group 1 we know uh, through the inverse demand function is equal to 16 minus uh, Q1. So that's the price. I'm going to multiply that by the quantity sold to group 1. And I can write this as, um, to be clear, this is revenue group 1. And we're going to add to that the revenue from group 2, which is the price charge for group 2, which we know through the inverse demand function group 2 is equal to 24 minus 2Q2. And it's the price times the quantity sold to group two. And this is the revenue from group two. And then we're going to subtract off the cost, which in this problem is just the square of the sum of the quantities sold to each group. Basically, it's a total quantity produced squared. OK, so what is this? This is an equation that we're trying to maximize that depends on two variables. Q1 and Q2. We have a way to solve those types of problems, right? We're going to take the partial derivative with respect to each of those variables and set them equal to zero. That's going to give us two equations to help solve for the two unknowns, Q1 and Q2, to solve for the values of Q1 and Q2, which maximize this function. So let's do that. Let's write down this first uh, partial derivative to partial derivative profits with respect to Q1. And that's going to be equal to 16 minus 2 times Q1 minus 2 times Q1 plus Q2. And that's equal to 0. From the second equation, we get the partial derivative of profits with respect to Q2. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, the second equation is the partial derivative of profits with respect to Q2. Um, and that's going to be equal to 24 minus 2 times Q2 minus 2 times Q1 plus Q2. And again, that one's equal to 0. So how do we solve this? Um, we can do any method to solve these two equations for the two unknowns. Maybe a simpler way is to rearrange equation 1 to solve for Q1, and then we'll plug that into equation 2. So rearranging equation 1, we'll call it 1 prime. We're going to get uh, 16 minus 4q1 minus 2q2 is equal to 0, or q1 is equal to 4 minus 1 half uh, times q2. It's just rearranging the above equation. And then we could plug this part in here to get equation 2 in terms of only one variable. Okay, so we can plug that in. So uh, we have 24 minus 2 times Q2 uh, minus 2 times, and then I'm going to plug this whole thing in here, 4 minus 1 half times Q2. And then, so this, this first part is just this um, Q1 in the equation. We also have to add to that Q2. Okay. And that's equal to 0. And if you solve this uh, further, you would get that Q2 is equal to 16 divided by 3. 
which implies that um, Q1 is equal to 4 over 3. Okay, we can figure that out from this uh, equation highlighted here. And um, then we can plug it into the inverse demand functions for each group, and we can get that the price charge to group 1 is equal to 44 over 3. And the price charge to group 2 is 56 over 3. This problem was a little bit more complicated when the marginal cost was not constant. In that case, we could not just treat it as two separate markets. So we wrote down the entire profit function, specifically including the revenue earned from group 1, the revenue earned from group 2, and the cost function. And then we could take two partial derivatives, the partial derivative uh, of the profit function with respect to Q1 and the partial derivative of the profit function with respect to Q2. That gives us two equations to help us solve for the two unknowns, the values of Q1 and Q2, which jointly maximize the profit function. Um, and then once we find those quantities, we can plug them back into the inverse demand function for group 1 and 2 respectively to figure out the optimal prices that the firm would want to charge each group under third degree price discrimination. The last thing that I wanted to do is to look back at some of these equations and help draw some intuition from them. So I want to go back here and I want to specifically start by focusing on the part circled here. Okay. Notice that this is the marginal revenue from group 1. If you take the revenue from group 1 and take the derivative, you get what is circled in blue here. So this first equation here is saying that marginal revenue minus the second part which is just equal to marginal cost, is equal to zero. Now notice this is the total marginal cost incorporating the number of units sold to group one and to group two. Likewise, if you look at this second equation, this first circled part is the marginal revenue from group two. It's just the derivative of this part of the profit equation, which was the revenue from group two. And we find that the marginal revenue from group 2 minus the second part, or marginal cost, is equal to zero. When the firm is optimizing, the marginal revenue from any particular group should be equal to the marginal cost. And the logic for this is that if the marginal revenue from a group, that's the marginal revenue earned from the last unit sold, is less than the marginal cost of the last unit sold, then the firm is losing money by selling that last unit to that group. And so they should reduce the amount that they sell to that group and raise the price. Okay. This also implies that the marginal revenues for one group are, is equal to the marginal revenue from the other group.